All right, now let's talk about what's called Falk theorems. It basically is asking the following question. Well, if the monopoly pricing is sustainable in, for example, repeated Bertrand competition, can we really sustain uh, everything? Well, not everything, but we can sustain a lot of things. And so this is basically what the Falk theorems tells us. So we need a little bit of notation uh, to be able to talk about Falk theorem. The first one is the min max value. We already defined how to find min max value, right? So vi lower bar, we call it min max value. And as we know, it's uh, found by this. So for example, if uh, we are talking about the prisoner's dilemma, again, min max, max min values can be fined for any games. But the thing is, they're not uh, sort of meaningful solution concepts for all games. So the min max value for prisoner's dilemma game is, for example, one for each player. All right, so a payoff vector V, which basically tells us what payoff each player gets, is called individually rational if VI is greater than or equal to VI lower bar for every I. Well, what is min max value? If you remember, min max value is the, if you act a little bit smart in a game, that's the lowest payoff you can get. I mean, you can ensure whatever your opponents do, right? You can get something higher than this, but if you choose your min-max strategy, you are going to get at least, in expectation of course, at least that payoff. All right, so that's the idea of min-max. So therefore, we call a payoff individually rational if everybody receives at least his or her min max value. So then, uh, well, let's talk about this proposition. So if a strategy profile, sigma star, is a Nash equilibrium of some uh, strategic form game G, well, then each player under this strategy profile, sigma star, must be receiving higher or equal to his or her uh, uh, min max value. So that means there exists no Nash equilibrium of any game where a player gets or receives less than his or her min max value. This is impossible. All right. So these are the Nash equilibrium strategies. Okay. Well, we're going to define set of feasible payoffs in a game, in a repeated game. All right. But obviously we're talking about the stage game payoffs. Right, the average payoffs. So we're going to denote this set of feasible payoffs by capital V. So it's the, this is co basically a convex combination. Co is the smallest convex set that includes the points in it. All right. So here, what is in it? Well, all the payoff vectors such that there exists some action profile or strategy profile where the utility of the players correspond to that V. All right, this is what this set is. And then I'm taking the convex uh, hole. We call this convex hole of these points. Well, again, if this is a prisoner's dilemma, in this game, there are four pure strategy profiles, right? Uh, two, two, which is here, uh, zero, three, and three zero here and here, and then one one. So the convex hole of those four points is basically the minimum convex, uh, I'm sorry, minimum, smallest convex set that includes all those four points. So basically it's the convex combination of all those four points. So this area is the convex hole or set of feasible payoffs. All right, for this game. What does that mean intuitively? It says the following. Uh, if two player is playing this game, there's no way they can get a payoff outside of this shape, outside of this region. It's impossible, all right? Which makes sense, right? Because zero, zero, I mean, if one player gets zero, the other can get, cannot get zero. I mean, it's impossible in this game, all right? So. Here's the Falk theorem. There are many of them, but that's sort of the fundamental one. If the dimension of the set of feasible payoffs is equal to n, uh, which is the number of players. So what is the dimension of a set? Well, I, I don't know if you remember from uh, uh, linear algebra, but every vector space, uh, we talk about the uh, spinning set so the dimension of a set, so for example, Rn or R to the power two, the, the vectors, uh, vector space has dimension of two, 
right? So this is what we mean. So if the dimension of this set is equal to n, for example, the dimension of this set is equal to 2, all right? Um, so if there are three players, the dimension of this set must be equal to three. If there are five players, the dimension must be equal to five. And many games actually satisfy, do satisfy this property, but it's important. Then, but it's technical. Then for every strictly individually rational payoff vector, meaning, remember in this game, uh, one is the min-max payoff for both players. So it says strictly individually rational. So here individually rational is this, strictly individually rational, strictly individually rational basically means each player gets strictly higher payoff. All right, so basically this area uh, is the, not the boundaries, is the strictly uh, individually rational uh, set of payoffs. So every payoff vector here can be supported as a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of a repeated game if players are patient enough. This is what we want to say. So let me uh, start reading again. If the dimension of the game is equal to the payoff, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this, uh, the number of the players, then for every strictly individually rational payoff vector V, there exists some threshold delta which is in zero one interval, such that for every delta greater than this threshold delta bar, meaning as long as the players are more patient than this threshold delta level, then there exists a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium strategy of the infinite horizon repeated game of this stage game, G, where the, all the players have the same discount factor, this is for simplicity, with payoff vector V. So if uh, two players are repeating the prisoner's dilemma forever. Well, then the payoff 2-2 two, two is, can be, the average payoff 2-2 two, two can be supported as a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. What does that mean? That means there exists some um, strategy profile uh, which gives on average 2-2 two, two payoff uh, and it's subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. But is that it? No. Any payoff in this region can pay off a vector in this region can actually be supported. I mean, they can achieve 2-2, two, two, but you know, they may also achieve something uh, different than 2-2. Two, two. For example, 2 and 1.5, all right? Or 2 point something, I don't know what it is, but 1 point something, all right? So any vector in this region can be supported as a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. This is what this folk theorem says.